Hey, welcome back. First of all, thanks for all the positive feedback I got on my previous video. Also a few questions popped up. So in this video I'm going to make another climbing hold and during that process I'm going a little bit more into detail and I will show you which tools in particular I'm using. So let's get started. This is the type of climbing hold I'm going to make today. A two finger pocket or at least for my finger size it's a two finger pocket. I'm going to use this piece of timber to make another one. Here on my workbench are some of the tools I'm going to use today. I will go into detail during this video, during the individual steps, what I'm using and how I use it. But I want to just highlight right now the anger grinder. I'm using an anger grinder with different carbide discs and I'm going to use this turbo shaft. It has small hard metal teeth on top of it and it will be attached to the angle grinder as well and it's used to shape this inner part. I'm using these countersunk bolts and therefore I have these three drill bits. I've got a 20 millimeter drill bit for the top part for the head of the bolt. I've got this countersink drill bit for the countersunk part and a 11 millimeter diameter drill bit for the bottom part. Usually I'm using a drill press but right now I don't have access to a drill press because of the lockdown. So please make sure that you're perpendicular to the bottom surface of your climbing hold. One really useful thing about this bandsaw is that you can um, tilt the whole table. Now I'm going to tilt it to 25 degrees and then make some more cuts. sander is one of the most useful tools when it comes to making climbing holes, especially when you're making smaller climbing holes. For example this crimp here. You can uh, use it for almost any step to create this kind of shape. In general I would also say the bigger the better because I'm using the belt sander to create a plain bottom surface of a climbing hold and if I make big climbing hold like this one for example, it's really useful <laughs> to have a big belt sander. So for our finger pocket today we won't use the belt sander as much. We're going to use it to make a plain bottom surface and then we make it even round and smooth out here.
In the next step, I'm going to use this Carver's vise from Veritas. It's really, really useful for making climbing holes. We've got this arm here, and when you unlock it, you can move it, you can rotate it, you can lock it again, and when it's locked, and if you pull on the handle, you can move this handle so it's never in your way. On this part, I screwed on some plywood. There's a T-nut in here, so I can use a bolt to attach the climbing hold. I'm now going to use the angle grinder with the coarse carbide disc, and I'm going to use it to shape these parts to make it more round, more smooth. So far I've used this coarse carbide disc to carve, to shape the outer part of the climbing hold. I removed quite a lot on, of the, on the top side uh, because of those cracks, you can see them here. I'm now going to swap the carbide disc and use this finer one. Here you can see the difference in uh, shape. This one is more rounded. And you can also see this one has more and smaller spikes. For most climbing holes, this finer and flat one is really useful because you end up with a result where you don't have to um, do another step, so you can just start sanding. One more thing I want to mention when you're working with these carbide discs. So these are from King Arthur's tools. And um, my original nut that came with the angle grinder is pretty big. So if you want to attach the carbide disc to your angle grinder with this nut, it's only in contact um, on the outer part of the discs in here. So you need a smaller nut. Uh, this one here fits really nice and you also need a different tool. So my original uh, nut has those holes. You've got the spanner to tighten it. Um, for these discs you need something different, especially because you don't want to damage um, the spikes of your carbide discs. So this spanner um, is shaped this way, so if you tighten the nut it won't damage the disc. I'm now changing to the turbo shaft.
Next step, sanding. Therefore, I have this sanding pad, which I'm going to use with my drill. You could also attach it to the angle grinder, but this one uh, is a constant speed with uh, 11,000 RPM, which is way too fast, which is why I'm going to use my drill. And it has a nice foam layer in here, so it's soft, it has some welker here, and yeah, I bought it at a normal Home Depot, normal hardware store for 15 New Zealand dollars. And it's, I think it's one of the most useful uh, tools. Yeah, please don't use it on a fast angle grinder. You'll just waste the sanding pads and you burn your climbing hold. In the next step I'm going to use this contour sander. It's basically a mini orbital sander. It has a 50 millimeter sanding pad and it's slightly off-centered, this shaft, which may create a orbital movement when attached to the angle grinder. It's also from Arbotech, bought it years ago for, for carving. The pad itself is flexible but I wouldn't recommend uh, buying it for in general for making climbing holes. It's just that I have it available, which is why I'm going to use it now. In the next step I'm going to use this barrel sander. Um, this can be attached to the drill.
also drill a small hole. I'm using this 5mm drill bit with a countersunk, countersink drill bit attached to it. When I attach the climbing hole to the wall, I'm not only using a bolt, I'm also using small screws. The purpose of these screws is to avoid spinning of the climbing hole. In this case, because this is a finger pocket, um, screws down here will also add some extra stability to the climbing hole. I'm going to finish the outer part now and therefore I'm using a detail sander. I bought this one in a second hand store for 10 bucks and it's really useful. I'm using 60 grit sandpaper on it. Last finish is hand sandpaper 80 grit. Sometimes 120 but typically 80 is absolutely enough.